Okay, so I'm excited to get in here and start building, but we need a site to work with first. We need a Drupal installation on our local computer. You can also use a remote hosted solution like Pantheon or Web Enabled to follow most of this series, but you're gonna be able to be a bit more flexible if you can work locally. We're going to take an approach that we did in our previous set of videos about site building, where we use Acquia Dev Desktop in order to import a default Drupal site. Since we've already gone over that in detail, as well as how to create a site on Pantheon, we're not going to linger on that, but I'll keep recording as we go through the process of setting up the site. The first thing we need are the files for Drupal core, and we can get that off of the Drupal site. I'm going to go to a browser, and I'm just gonna do a quick search for download Drupal. So you can see the page we need to go to is drupal.org slash download. I'll go ahead and open that up, and I'm going to click download Drupal 7.19. By the time you watch this video, there may have been additional releases to Drupal. If you scroll down on this page, you see that there's a version 7.19 and a version 6.28. Now, we need to download Drupal 7 for this, so it will always start with 7. Dot. The next version will be 7.2020, the next one would be 7.21. And in general, you should be able to work with later releases of Drupal 7 because the fixes are mostly security related and bug fixes. If you download Drupal 6, however, or are working with a Drupal 6 site, you're gonna have a hard time following along with the videos because there will be some dramatic differences. Also, when Drupal 8 gets released, there will be significant changes as well. So some of these videos will likely not apply. I'm going to download the zip version of this. Once I have the file downloaded, it will be named something like drupal-7.19.zip. You can expand it. And then I'm going to take this expanded folder, which is our Drupal root, and I'm gonna copy it over to some place that I want it to be permanently. So I'm right clicking, I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to go to the location where I want it to be and paste it in. And then I'm gonna name this folder Gift of Geek which again is the name of the company that we're building this site for. If we expand this, you'll see a list of folders and files that you probably recognize from working with Drupal before. So now that we have this in the location that we want it, it's time to import it into Acquia Dev Desktop. So I'm going to jump over to the program, and if you don't have this installed already, it's pretty straightforward, but there is a video on Build a Module that will help you install this either on Windows or on Mac. Once you get to this point where it's up and running, go ahead and click on settings and click on sites. And this lists the sites that are currently being managed through this program. And we can click import in order to import a site from anywhere on our computer. I'll click browse to go to the location where my Drupal code base is. I'll select the folder and click open. This is a fresh Drupal site, so I'll check create a new database. For a database name, we'll go ahead and name it Gift of Geek to keep it easy to remember and to keep everything consistent in our local environment. For a subdomain, we'll type Gift of Geek again. And once we import this, we'll be able to get to the site by going to giftofgeek.localhost colon 8082, which is just the port number. And now I'll click import. This will open up the install.php file, which will allow us to choose an install profile we'll use the standard like we have in previous videos and click save and continue. I only speak English at this point. Hopefully in the future I can do videos in other languages. So we'll go ahead and keep English checked and click save and continue. It'll take just a second to establish all of the modules in the database. And now we can set up the basic information for this site. I'm going to fill this out on fast forward and then explain my choices. Okay, so I've inputted Gift of Geek as the site name. That's what's going to display at the top of the site. Now, we are a site builder in this situation, but it helps to have a couple of identifiers to know what site we're working on at any given time. And sometimes having a logo and just a little bit of visual identity can help inspire the process a bit. I added the site email address, which if you read this, is where all of the email comes from when it gets sent from our site. It also copies this information over to the email address of the site maintenance account, which is the first user that gets created on the site. We're gonna put in the username admin 
And for password, we're also going to put in admin. Now this is important to note because if you skip around in these videos, you may use a database dump that includes this user in it. But just so you know what we're doing here and what the database dumps will include, it's admin and admin. Of course, we'll wanna change this if we go live with this site because that's pretty much the first password that any bot will guess as it tries to hack the site. I'm going to scroll down. Everything else here we're leaving as a default. I'm in Idaho, which is the America Denver time zone, and I'll leave the update notifications on. Although often I will uncheck this on production sites because I want to go through the process of updating manually. If you don't have a system in place to help people know when they should check for updates, then having this checked is a good idea. Even if the emails go to your client, it's a good reminder that, hey, we need to continually keep this site up to date in order to make sure that it's free from security holes and hey, you get some bug fixes along the way. I'll click save and continue. And we're done. We can visit our new site.